All right, I've got my vector type, but this is just the type I want to fit into my text blocking sketch. So the next step is to save these as vectors. And to do that, I'm going to turn off one of these because I have words that go on the top and the bottom of my illustration, right? I want to make each of those its own vector so I can place them individually as smart objects in Photoshop. So first I'm going to save Nick out of Illustrator. I'm going to save it as a vector file and I'm going to save it with its lettering. So I'm going to call it final because I already had a, another one. And I'm going to save it because we're using Adobe products now, Illustrator and Photoshop. I'm going to save it as an EPS. It would also work as an SVG as long as it's in the art form. It will work as an SVG. EPS doesn't matter. So it's on the desktop. I want to make sure it's there. All the default settings I keep. And there it is. My final NIC. So that's a transitional vector file. Next, I turn that one off. I turn the knock on and I save that one. Same way, save as, onto my computer, as an EPS, but I gotta change the name. And I just always use the lettering, right? To the desktop. Now that's saved, all the defaults. Okay, now I can actually close Illustrator, but if I wanna be extra safe, which is always good, I'm gonna save this as an Illustrator file. Onto my computer, and this is my final Nick knock <laughs> as an AI file, right, to the desktop. And I'll just put that in my assignment folder. Once I've done that, that gives me all of these components, even my old ones, right? Now, I'm going to take these two EPS files and I'm going to combine them with what I had set up in Photoshop, okay? So what I had set up in Photoshop was a file opened in Photoshop that is 16 by 20 inches by 350 pixels per inch. And then I brought in my spot illustration. I actually brought in two of them. I brought in one that was full spectrum colored. I brought in one that was just a duotone hard edge. I kind of like the duotone hard edge a little bit better. You can play around with it, but it's at full resolution. And then these were the ones I brought in on Monday. They were SVG files brought into Photopea. Now I'm bringing my EPS files into Photoshop, but it's the exact same thing. Once I bring them up in, I can place them individually. And if I need to know how to place them, I can always use my text blocking to help. So, let's see, you don't need that one. Let's bring in the next one. And now I can decide, okay, do I like that? How can I, how can I check? I would just turn off all of these and maybe turn off the background for now. And then maybe push the spot illustration on top. Right? And do I like that kind of energy, that kind of placement? Or do I want to adjust it a little bit? Like maybe that the nick should be a little bit bigger. So I can always do Command T. Because it's a smart object, it's always going to raster up perfectly. That's why you drag and drop the EPS in. And do I want to do things like tilt it, kind of like I did with my initial text blocking. You know, I played with a different arrangement. I don't know why I'm on the crop tool. don't want to be on the crop tool. So that's how this will resolve itself. That's how you get to your black type to post. So your black type is not just showing me your vector type design, it's also showing me your arrangement of it. And you can show it with your spot illustration in it or not.
but I think in some ways it's better to see it without, like you see in this example. Gosh, what's going on with Photoshop? <laughs> I don't like it's taking so long. Okay, let's undo that crop. And if we need more space, you can always give yourself more space as well. But I have a little bit of tilt there. Now I'm going to put a little bit of tilt with Command T on the knock and maybe make it a little bit bigger. And what's the most important thing with text? It's that it's readable and that you're avoiding, you know, uncomfortable overlapping or touching. So if you're going to have my spot illustration in front of it, I want it clearly in front of it, right? I don't want it just barely touching it. And so this is all kind of tricky. And of course, I can also adjust my spot illustrations placement. Where is he? Here he is. Because that's also a smart object. Your spot illustration was rendered at a high enough, colored at a high enough resolution that it will work. All right. All right, I like that placement. Now I'm going to turn off all of the sketching. And I'm going to select just these three elements, which are my spot illustration and then my black type. They are all smart objects right now. And I'm going to arrange them on my composition in the way I like, which is like that. And then I might do modifications just to my spot illustration with the offset. I might increase its stroke a little bit. So I'll make it stroke 32 pixels. So there's this clear, you know, boundary around it. See how that looks with my background? That looks okay. I need to probably adjust my background a little. Or just grow both, all of these just a little bit so that they intentionally break the border. Give it some, some energy. Maybe even tilt it all a little bit. So it feels very intentional. Okay. So that's my black type solution. How am I going to post that? I'm actually going to turn off my spot illustration and just save it like this. So how do I do that? I save it as a JPEG. And you know what? Just to save time, I'm just going to make it big on the screen and I'm just going to do a screen grab of it. Command Shift 4. And I'm going to take that screen grab with a little bit of the black edge to show what the proportions of the paper are. Okay, next, I'm going to post that to Canvas. The screen grab I just did of the black type solution. So I'm going to replace this one. I don't want to confuse by having multiple submissions. right? Just because it's not the deadline till 11.59 tonight. So I get to decide what's what I'm submitting. So I like that one. Just to show you, you can do all of this if you know what you're doing. And you have a, a clear sketch kind of in mind. Okay, and then I need the color. So that's the black type. Next we're going to have the color type solution. So the vector color type solution, just like we did a black logo, a black uh, vector logo, and a color vector logo. This is going to be using layer styles to color. And you can duplicate sections 
if you want to. So what is my inspiration for the coloring? It is this. It has an offset of blue and magenta. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to put Nick and Knock in a group. Then I'm going to duplicate that group. Boom. Now on that duplicate of the group, I'm going to try a layer style. Double click, and I'm going to do a color overlay that is not white. Instead, it's going to be magenta, strong magenta. Then I'm going to make another duplicate of that group, and I'm going to change that color overlay to cyan. And if I want to get it exactly right, I can bring in this TikTok logo, which is just gotten from the internet, bring it into Photoshop, and just steal the colors directly from there. Even though it's tiny. I'll make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. Okay, so how do I do that? I go to my color overlay, and I click right on that color to match it. Then I go to this one, and I go to color overlay, and I click right on this color to match it. Because they're not quite cyan and magenta. They're a little different. Now, what I'm going to do is play with their placement. I'm going to put these underneath the black. Or they're both under the black. Now I'm going to click just one, and I'm going to use my arrow, and I'm going to move it off. So it's called offsetting which is actually really bad for colorblind people. Depending on your type of colorblindness. But it's what TikTok does. It's what's kind of effective. So then I'm going to do it with the next one too. I'm just going to offset it. Make it a little jittery. Make it a little weird. Make a little hip hop. Make it, make it on fleek. Make it turn. I don't know. Okay. I'm liking that. I like the energy of that. Let's get rid of that. And then let's see how that looks with the spot illustration, right? And it gives me this kind of nauseated feeling. <laughs> Just like TikTok. All right. Now, what else do I need? If that's my color solution, I might play with rasterizing these. So I can merge the groups. No, not the black line art, sorry. I can merge the colored groups, right? And that will automatically rasterize them. And then I can play with different layer styles. You know, where they show up in different ways. Let's see if there's anything that really jumps out. So, for instance, if I do hard light and then I move it more, you know, maybe I can fine-tune it, fine-tune its placement. And then same thing with this, different blending modes. I kind of like that brighter pink from linear light, from pin light. So I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit. That helps its readability. Now, how do I save the color version? Well, I just turn off the spot illustration, right? And again, make it pretty big on the screen, and then make a screen grab. You can also save it as a JPEG. Just make sure if you save it as JPEGs or PNGs, you change the name so you're not overwriting them. And then I'm going to put that into my post on Canvas. This is my second component that's required, my color image. And where is it? It's right there. And then shrink it so it's not so huge. So then the last thing is adding a border. A border is to understand how the edges are working. So I am uncomfortably close at the top and bottom. That's called a tangency in design. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the canvas size and I'm just going to make it a half inch bigger on each side. Actually, no, I'm going to keep it 16 inches wide, but I'm going to make it 21 inches tall. So it's a half inch on the top and bottom. 
There we go. Then I'm going to take that white background.